Hello again, welcome back everyone, and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit video, not a spirit review video today, because what I wanted to do here is actually talk about a lot of questions that I get asked quite frequently about how I protect my bottles, because as you can see, I do have a big collection back there, almost 1,500 bottles. I would say every bit, I'd say all but two bottles back there are open. And how do I protect them? How do I keep them from losing their flavor over the years? I get asked, how long are they going to last if you don't do anything to them? And I'm going to address all these questions. We're going to talk about different types of methods you can help protect your bottles with. We're going to talk about parafilm and how I use that to protect my back stock bottles. So when I come across a bottle that I really like, I will buy one or two bottles and I'll parafilm the back up so that whenever I get to it, I can take that parafilm off. It'll be ready to go. It hasn't, you know, sometimes you got to be careful because what will happen is if you just put a bottle in, you know, in your in a closet or something, it'll start, the cork will degrade slowly. Not all the time. It's not on every bottle, but often. And especially if you wait five, ten years to open that bottle, there's a good chance that cork has degraded and kind of shrunk up just enough to let some of that alcohol start to evaporate out of that bottle. And you'll notice a low fill level. And that's just the telltale sign that that cork is pretty much shot. Now, when you come across a bottle like that with a low fill level, that cork is more than likely going to break. The second you turn that cork to remove it, bang, it's going to snap off. You're going to have to be really careful in how you get that cork out of there um, and then replace the cork. Okay, but we're going to talk about how I use parafilm to seal my bottles and so on. All right, so let's go ahead and get started talking about the Elijah Craig that I have right here. This was, happens to be a Hawaiian Whiskey Mafia pick that I picked up when I was in Oahu recently. Great bottle. As you can see, I have got it down well past the shoulder. That is, to me, is a really good spot for a bottle, okay? And the reason I say that is when it's cast strength like this, I like for them to kind of soften up just a smidge. So I'll drink them to about right here. I'll let the oxygen go to work. It starts kind of rounding out that spice that sharpness, the astringency that it'll have. After about, you know, depends on how rough around the edges it is initially, it can take anywhere from just as short as maybe, you know, a month to maybe a year. Somewhere in there is where the sweet spot is going to be for that bottle, okay? Um, I know the Delord, the Armagnac Delord's sweet spot is usually about hmm, four to eight months, somewhere in there. That's how long it takes for them to just get really nice and round. And then one day you'll taste it and you'll be like, wow, that's amazing. And that's when you need to start protecting that bottle. Okay. So this bottle right here has been open for about, I would say, two, three months now. It's still not to the point where I'm going to start gassing it because all my bottles back there, I protect by using argon gas. And I have a uh, pretty good sized tank set up, which I've shown in another video once before, but I'll try to put up a picture uh, of that right now so that you can see it. It's just a nice big argon tank that I can, has a regulator on it, has a, a food grade vinyl hose with a spigot at the very end that has like a little four way nozzle. And I'll drop that into the bottle. I'll turn on the gas and make sure you loosen up the regulator at first, turn on the gas, and then start opening the air on the regulator. It starts going in at about five to eight pounds is what I like to put it at. It'll flush all that oxygen out of the bottle. And then you just, as you remove it, put the cork on, it's good to go. As long as you don't move that bottle a lot, it's going to hold that nice blanket of argon. Okay. That's what I do. Now, for smaller collections, there's no sense in buying, you know, investing. I'd say it's going to cost you probably, at the time, it was like 250 when I did that. But I imagine now it could be close to 400 Hopefully not five hundred dollars for the old setup, but I'm guessing about three to three to five somewhere in there uh, for the whole thing. Of course, when you run out of that tank, uh, and that tank lasts me a while. You know, I'm I'm constantly filling bottles because I go to different groups, different events, and then when I come home, I need to gas my bottles, put them away, and so that tank will last me probably a good month to two months. Okay, uh, to whereas when I was in a smaller you know collection. I used to use this. It was Private Preserve. There's other brands out there, and I am not sponsored by Private Preserve. I don't get anything from them. I am Neither do I do get anything from Parafilm or anybody here. I'm just showing you what I use and what I've learned. This has been around for a long time. It's actually a combination 
of carbon, uh, CO2, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and argon. And it's mainly used initially with wine preservers. So when you open a bottle of wine, of course, you only have like maybe three days if you're lucky to drink it. Well, if you seal the bottle with this, you can hopefully extend that maybe twice the life. Um, in the whiskey world or in the spirit world, it, the can feels empty, by the way, and there's nothing in there. You don't hear anything because it's just a gas. Uh, but basically, well, the way I would do it is, and hopefully you can see this, if I was ready for this to be sealed, I put the nozzle on, insert it towards the bottom, get the cork up there, and I'll go ahead and just start hitting it with about a one, two, three, and then I do about four quick sprays and close it. They say you only need to do about a one second by two to three little bursts, and they say you get 120 uses out of it. I found that I only got about 80 or 90 uses. Now, of course, with that amount of pressure, you know, you're only putting probably a small blanket, I'm imagining, of the argon in there. So there's some oxygen still in there. So it's very imperative that you do not move that bottle a lot. So once you go set it on your shelf, leave it there. Because, again, if you shake it too much, you're going to disturb that argon blanket. But... Uh, that's what this is for. Retail pricing on one of these, I want to say it's somewhere around $15 for a can. I think it's a good investment. It protects those bottles. I can I can say for sure that I've used it for years and years early on, and I still have bottles from the very beginning that started out with a lot of this and have now moved on to my big Argon tank. And you taste them now, and they still taste great. They haven't fallen off. They could be 10, 15 years old. And people taste them and they're just like, wow, that is not, that tastes delicious, you know, delicious. And I'm like, yeah, well, you just got to protect your bottles, right? Now, another way to do this, and I have friends that have done this in the past, is to use, and I'll try and show a close-up of this. Maybe I'll show a picture of it close up. Uh, marbles, all right, clear marbles. Now, you have to make sure there's no, there's a very, you know, high quality grade marble as far as not having any lead, um, you know, hopefully made in the USA type situations, but if you use marbles, you're basically just displacing, right? So you just keep adding marbles till it gets up to the neck there. So there's a minimum amount of oxygen trapped. So it's going to, you know, really minimize the effect of the oxidation that's happening of the dead, uh, degrading of the spirit that's happening inside that bottle. Now, the only thing I don't like about this, A, gets heavy, especially this is just a 375 bottle. You put it on a 750, when they start getting full, A, you're going through a ton of marbles. B, every bottle's super heavy. When you go to pour them, sometimes you got to be careful because the marble will want to jump out. It's To me, that is not a great method. It is a method, just not a great one. All right, so I'll go ahead and leave it like that. Another method you could do is just putting them in smaller bottles, which is basically that was an example of, right? This started out as a Colila 12, and you can, you know, do a nice little label for your small bottle. Uh, you can get these bottles on Amazon, 375s. Um, that's a half bottle. And you can just start, you know, putting them in there. And then when this starts getting down lower, you can go into a four-ounce bottle and maybe label those. Maybe I wouldn't do a fancy label like this one on a smaller bottle, but you can go into a four-ounce or a two-ounce or even a one-ounce, and you break them down, you label them all, so at least now you know that spirit is protected, okay? Again, that gets very, that can get very cumbersome. There's a lot of these bottles going around, you know, in your house. It gets a little confusing sometimes. That's why I personally prefer the gas, argon gas method. Again, when I'm refilling that tank, or if you're just paying $15 for this can, it's going to last you a little while. Uh, for the tank, again, it lasts me about two months, and Argon is not super cheap. It's about $50 when I have to exchange that tank for a new one, a full one, 50 bucks. If you're doing nitrogen, which you can just use just nitrogen, you know, that I think that goes down to maybe 20, 25, somewhere in there. But I've just always used argon. That's just what I do. Okay. Now, let's say you have a glass of spirit. This happens to be some of this is Elijah Craig right here. And you've been sipping on it, but you still have some left. And you're like, ah. Uh, I want to see what happens to it overnight, right? If you leave it out like this, in the morning, it's probably going to be shot. It's going to be probably cloudy because it's non-chill filtered. It could start losing a lot of flavor and getting really weird flavors. So what I like to do is use a cap. Now, there's different types of caps. This happens to be a cap from Karen Craft. 
And this is a glass cap with a silicone little seal. Fit great. Um, I really like these. They do not affect the spirit. I, a long time ago, I ran across some wooden ones. I wasn't a fan of the wooden ones. They tended to impart some characteristic to the spirit. Of course, I got contacted by that company and they, you know, told me, they apologized. They said, yes, it was a bad batch. They fixed the problem. So I can see where if some people do the wood now, it's not a problem, but it was just something I ran into. I know this shouldn't give me any problem, so I like using these. Uh, they do come in like a set of six, and they're numbered like Roman numerals, one, two, three, four, five, six, in case you want to do like some kind of blind or a lineup or something. Really easy. Uh, but again, you can put this, you know, on a counter overnight, come to it in the morning, crack it, take that slow inhalation. And it's going to be, you know, probably really, really good because it's had time to breathe in the glass. Kind of, again, what happens to this in the bottle, just much slower than it would in this little glass as far as the volume levels. All right. Now, let's go ahead and get to the parafilm thing. And I'm going to move uh, this some bottles out of the way. And we are going to do that. Now, I will shoot a close-up. And I'm going to do two different bottle shapes because I know not every bottle is shaped the same and so I have them already cut because the way they come is in this roll I use the four inch the four inch by 125 foot you can get it online you can get it on Amazon whatever um, but this is what it looks like right and when you cut off the sheet matter of fact for this one I would use probably about six would get it done six squares I this is cut to seven uh, but the reason is, is because if I'm going to be sealing this for a long time, you know, long term storage, I really need this to last. All right. And the one bad thing you can do to parafilm that I'm going to show you to avoid is stretching it too thin. If you stretch it too thin, a lot of the I mean, the parafilm notes will tell you if you stretch it too thin, the basically the alcohol can escape through it. But again, if you do multiple wraps and so on, you don't stretch it too thin, you're going to be really, really safe. All right, so I'm going to pause it right here, and then I'm going to do a close-up so you can actually see this going on. All right, so here we are. Got that close-up going. Have the parafilm here. Now, because if you look at the height of the parafilm, it's actually pretty good. It's kind of like a Christmas present where you want it to cover at least half of the top of the cork. So actually, this one's just a smidge long. And I'm talking like maybe a quarter inch. So I would take my scissors. I would cut a quarter inch or so, maybe a half inch, quarter inch, off that parafilm lengthwise there. So basically we're ending up with, oh, there we go, with two little pieces. I save the little one for the end. When you get your parafilm, you just kind of peel it. Some will be a little more sticky than others, but you trash the little paper. Now you're left with this little clear film. I usually start with my thumb on the, or four fingers right here on the bottom, kind of holding it. And I'm going to wrap around, not stretching. At the first one, it's just lightly taut, right? It's just going around. You'll know if you're doing it too tight because you'll start seeing the edges of the cork show really badly so we're going around that one that's nice and now from about here so that is one and a half around the cork from right here i'll start stretching it just a little bit not a lot stretching it just a little bit and now towards the very end i'll give it a good little stretch again you don't want to tear it you just want it to seal nice okay so now it kind of sticks more with warmth, by the way. So I've seen people use lighters on them. Me personally, if you just hold it there just for a minute, your body temperature will just heat it up just enough to make it stick to itself. Okay. Now then, at the very top, let's see if I can show this. Just kind of make sure everybody's nice and straight. And I usually start where it ended. I'll, that's the first place I'm going to push down. Then I just do the little... One, one, two, three, and then finally four right up on top like this. Again, from here, you can use your scissors, something to kind of, 
make it kind of squish and seal to itself a little better. But again, if you just use your thumb, that's going to do it. Now, if you notice down here, we still have some, because of the way the cork is shaped, I'll kind of form it a little bit with my hand there. And this is where that second little strip is going to come in handy. Because what I'm going to do is, if I can get it to peel here. Oh, there we go. Sometimes, again, some are a little stickier than others. You can always try the other end if that's time. Besides giving you too much of a hassle. Here we go. Okay. So then what I'll do again, I'll start with my thumb, usually right here on the, towards the bottom. And since this isn't really doing much on the ceiling part, I'll just give it a little, I don't really start off that loose. I give it a little bit of tension. I can feel it stretching just a little bit as I go around this bottle. And basically that is just making sure that that bottom part is not going to, you know, come undone. I'll go around this edge maybe just a little bit more. And that's it. Get it to seal. Again, check everybody. And that's about it. I mean, that's a nice little seal that's going to hold for quite some time. And that's how I do that. Now, if I switch to, let's say I have a, another bottle here. Go a little wider. There we go. It's a little taller. But this is more of a straight, you know, shape. This is going to be easy because this is almost dead perfect for not even having to cut it, right? And when you don't have to cut it, that's always the easiest way. Again, just kind of hold it there with your pointer, middle finger there, and then just kind of give it a nice little wrap. No tension really on the first one. Just making sure it's sealed. And once I get about one and a half around, then I'll start to go just a little, ten a little more tension. And towards the very end is where I go with the maximum there. Okay. Again, same type situation. Make sure the top is sealed. I mean, open there. And then I start where it ended. Press that down. Two, three, and four. And then it's just a matter of, again, applying pressure. A little warmth there. And I kind of like to just squish down the little points, even on the edges. And that's it. That's sealed up really nice, ready to hold uh, for however long it's going to take uh, for me to get back to that bottle. Okay, so that's pretty much how I like to seal all my bottles using parafilm. Of course, the one thing you didn't hear me talk about was wax. Uh, wax is a viable option nowadays. Uh, because, of course, craft beer has been doing wax sealed bottles uh, for quite some time. And now even a lot of the whiskeys, bourbons are getting into that wax sealing. Um, and so there's now waxes and formulas of waxes to do a really nice seal. Now, back when, again, I was starting out, we're talking mid-90s. Uh, I think I tried that around 1998, right around there. Uh, of course, back then, they didn't have any formulations for that, so it was pretty much left to just buying wax, getting a small crock pot, melting it in there, testing it out because some of it would be too brittle, uh, some of it would, um, you know, just not be right. It would just be too, too uh, what's the word, too hard. And so what would end up happening is you would have to add paraffin wax, not parafilm, you had to add paraffin wax or beeswax to it to try to get the, the end result where you liked it, made sure it, it adhered well even to the glass. That was part of the problem back then. I remember hearing people doing glue sticks. I never did glue sticks, but you could add glue sticks to the formula as well uh, to try and get it to hold. Um, but again, back then, we, you know, I didn't use know about parafilm back then, but everybody that I had heard was using either some type of plastic wrap, saran wrap, uh, people were doing balloons and things like that. And I remember hearing horror stories about the balloons because the balloons, <laughs> when you wax dipped them, uh, you know, they're protecting, let's say like this little um, paper neck tag that this bottle has, it's protecting that. And then you wax seal past the balloon onto the glass and that's a good seal. But 
what happens is when that cork fails, uh, you know, and it starts letting a little bit of that alcohol leak out, the wax is trapping it like it's supposed to, but it starts eating away at that little latex balloon. So the balloon turns into this gooey mess. And that was just, you know, I remember hearing people having to use like goo gone and stuff like that, trying to get that off. Of course, it's going to ruin, you know, that paper label that was under it. So, you know, that wasn't the way to go. Saran wrap worked. Uh, but now you have parafilm, so if you really wanted to up your game, you could get a little crock pot, get some of this good wax, choose whatever color you want nowadays, do the parafilm seal, go a wax dip over it onto the glass, um, and that's going to really hold for quite some time. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and all this information I tried to pass along. Of course, if you like content like this, join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound. That's what keeps this channel going. It is with their support that I'm able to continue to buy bottles to review because that's how the only way I like to do it. I don't want to um, owe anybody anything as far as reviews. Uh, but if you can't join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound, I thank each and every one of my YouTube viewers. Of course, you're going to get these videos two weeks you know, slower. Uh, you're going to have to watch the ads because on Patreon they get it ad-free. They also get a lot of bonus content, bonus video reviews. I do giveaways over there in a certain tier. Um, can't really talk too much about that because of the guidelines, but point is it happens. And I want to just thank all my viewers. Keep leaving all those great comments and I'll get to them just as soon as I can. Everyone have a great day and cheers.